Hello everybody, my name is Blue and today we are back on Yurak Educational Park. Today we are building a mosque. Yes, you heard me correctly. We are building a mosque for some reptiles, specifically the horned desert, the desert horned viper, I think it's called. Yeah, the desert horned viper and all the other desert animals in, or oh, desert exhibit animals in this game. But well, it's obviously for the desert horned viper since that's the new DLC animal. So yeah, basically I'm building a complete religious building for a reptile or a snake but it's um some bad news unfortunately since there's something wrong something that has gone wrong with my uh files with my recording and basically the whole exterior part of the speed build is gone yes it's corrupted i don't know what happened but Basically, there's no exterior, well, just a bit, this bit. So in this bit, I'm just adding a bit more detail to the building, but it's really unfortunate because as you can see, it's quite a big building and yeah, none of it I could actually show. But um, it, it, yeah, this is the mosque and it's, it's, yeah, it's really, it's really unfortunate. I wish that I could have shown the full speed build, but in return, despite the fact that, you know, most of the speed build is actually just the interior of the building the inside i i made quite a long walkthrough of the reptile house going in detail with every single reptile just to actually make the video a bit longer since um since yeah i lost a lot of time with just losing that footage which is really 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 unfortunate but yeah that was basically the the exterior part of the build that i still got the rest is gone yeah, the rest of the video is going to be interior, but the interior is still a lot of like detailing and stuff. There's still a lot of stuff going on, so um, yeah, definitely, uh, definitely watch the rest of the video. It's quite good, quite a good build. And the whole inspiration from this build was from a zoo in Belgium called Peridiza, and they have this old uh, church, I believe, and this church has uh, bats inside, so you can actually enter the church and basically. You can walk around and have bats fly around the church and it's quite dark and spooky looking it's really cool and it really fits that uh, theme with the bats i guess uh, and i wanted to recreate something similar but instead of a mosque since you know we're all in this arid kind of north african theme so um yeah i think a mosque was way more fitting and this is my first time building a religious building and it was really enjoyable i think they have a really fun style and the inside is basically just a whole bunch of pillars. But uh, yeah, it, it feels a bit like a church, I think, with the pillars. But I think it's just that mosques and churches kind of have a similar uh, interior when it comes to like having pillars and stuff. They're all both like quite old buildings. So I guess that's where they kind of got that similar kind of um, architecture just when it comes to having a bunch of pillars obviously not the same since one is European and one is more Middle Eastern North African so there's definitely differences in architecture but yeah it's really um, quite a fun build I must say and the pillars may look repetitive it may look a bit weird at, at first but just trust me on this the finished result will look really cool uh, so yeah uh, especially when once adding walls in between and stuff and having this whole reptile house experience with uh, bats in the middle and the idea is that the bats can just fly around the, uh, the mosque but they obviously choose to stay in the center where all their enrichment items are and all the food and water and stuff which makes sense but yeah the idea is that you can walk around and you have bats flying about but um, I actually haven't made the, the, the exhibit walkthrough I end up removing the path and just having a fence around the exhibit so you can't actually walk like through the middle i feel like it works better when you can only walk around the walkthrough exhibit uh which still has that same kind of feeling that you're inside of a mosque with bats that can fly around but they just choose to obviously stay in the middle where all their enrichment items are as i said and here i tried to do a window but i end up not doing a window since i feel like the window would have kind of ruined the whole like dark mysterious feeling of it of this mosque and i end up uh doing this feature wall instead I saw a lot of mosques that had some of these kind of feature walls. A lot of churches kind of have them as well. I'm, I'm not religious. I don't know what 
well i'm sure they have, they have some meanings but yeah it looked cool it looked cool that's the most important part and then uh there's actual the actual inhabitants of this um mosque this reptile house uh there will be two habitat animals which are the two monitor lizards from the base game the komodo dragon and the nile monitor since they they both have well, well they're both the only habitat reptiles that really fit this arid theme maybe i could have added a giant tortoise since that could have kind of worked or an arid theme kind of but yeah i ended up just doing these two monitor lizards and i think adding more habitat animals wouldn't have really worked this yeah it's not big enough there's not enough space for these habitat animals these two are, are taking up enough space as it is and you have to remember there are 10 exhibit animals in total well including the um the walkthrough habitat actually uh, walkthrough exhibit there are actually 11 exhibits so um yeah that took up quite space as well and yeah basically all the exhibits are basically every single um exhibit animal with a desert skirt with exception of the axolotls since i really wanted to add the axolotls because they do have like a grassland environment since well well yeah they live in water obviously that's not the most arid area but you could say the same about the Nile monitors living in water as well but they do live in a more arid environment comparing to more tropical or subtropical animals but yeah so the axolotl is the only animal without that desert skirt unfortunately um i wish you could like choose the skirts and stuff but yeah it would have been cool to have water but then still have that desert skirt around it but whatever what i'm doing now is i'm adding walls around the exhibits to like integrate the exhibits into the walls of the mosque and before this exhibit specifically which is the scarab beetle um it's only half the size so i made a custom uh, background which i tried to recreate um the yeah backgrounds from the like default exhibits and tried to like recreate that similar uh, look which it, it worked i guess it, it kind of looked the same using just the desert rocks and then i end up actually turning the scarab beetle into a feature wall as well so technically we have three uh, feature walls and they all they all look quite cool in my opinion the actual uh viper the horn viper is a really nice addition uh, it's its first snake in the dlc pack i think and it's our second african snake species uh after the puff adder and the horn viper is is the first well dlc exhibit animal in a short while to not be a walkthrough exhibit which is quite cool as well to see that we're still getting some normal exhibit animals uh, as well and the horned viper um it has this uh, behavior where it digs itself under the sand and frontier has actually added this behavior as well it's quite cool to see they don't really like do that movement and stuff but it's, they do spawn like half submerged in the sand sometimes which is quite cool I'm, i like that they've added that that extra detail and for the habitat animals i make uh, well i built this low well it's not very low because it's still taller than a human but i built this relatively low uh, glass wall uh, to make it, it feel a bit more open uh, and and then just the same rustic wall pieces from the euro pack uh, for the background as well i tried to do the exhibits in the like in different areas depending on the continent so i have a the entrance is with all the uh, North American animals and then at the back you have the Australian animals and some of the African animals like the puff adder and the new horned viper as well in the back and the scarab beetle you can't forget those and then I've just got the two uh, habitat animals on both uh, opposite ends of the mosque and then obviously in the middle the big walkthrough habitat with the bats I've connected the entrance to the butterfly house entrance so yeah, you can enter the reptile house through the butterfly house entrance. For the rest, for the um, actual habitat, I just tried to recreate the environments 
from the actual animals in their uh, local environments. Like for example, try to use um, try, try to just use a lot of grasses and stuff to get that scrubland feeling. And then I place these lights. I saw this image of a mosque that also had these lights around the pillars, which is quite cool. So I wanted to recreate that kind of feeling, and it really it it works really well at night in the dark. It really feels really cool with all these uh, floor lights around the pillars. And finally, I add some detail to the exhibits themselves by adding some pillars around them to make it feel a bit more integrated with the building. Uh, and then that's one of the last things I actually do to the exhibits and then I finally move over to the habitat animals where I do their whole environment and stuff like that uh, with some rocks, plenty of rocks and some grasses. And for the Nile water monitor I actually, oh well, the Nile monitor, I actually um, add some like a little pond, a, a, a little pool I guess as well, like a man-made pool as that it felt, felt like the most realistic having a man-made pool man-made pool, jeez, it's a, a tongue twister, a man-made pool. <laughs> but uh, yeah, as you can see, I'm building this pool where they can have a little swim and they actually do swim in there, so that's really cool to see. Uh, yeah, there's not much more to tell about this in general. I can say that when, once I do the, uh, the bats, I add some slactites and some faux rocks to make it a bit more interesting. So I think one of the last things I do, I think that's like all at the end of the speed build. Uh, but yeah, for the environment of the now monitor, as you can see, I'm adding a load of rocks and I'm trying to make the backdrop a bit more interesting as well with some rocks. And then, oh yeah, these, I used these twilight, uh, I always forget the name of these plants, but I used the twilight, these branches from the twilight pack. Uh, this really gives that desert look. And then, as I said, the grasses and the I forget the name of that tree. It's from the Euro pack, I think. But yeah, that tree fits quite well as well. Finishing off the pool, and then after that, I move over to the Komodo dragons. I think, unless I'm do something else first. No, yeah, straight over to the Komodo dragons. And for the Komodo dragons, to so try not to to be too repetitive, I did do like all those rocks in the back, but I try to do less rocks. Like a less of a rocky environment, more of a sandy environment. Although I do add these two like rock plateaus where they can, like, I, well, I imagine they would go sit on there and they'd like um, warm themselves up, have like a higher, uh, like a perch kind of thing where they can, they can basically sit on and enjoy and relax and have a good old time. But as you can see, the, the rocks are mostly on the edges and the actual. Like center of the habitat is more sandy, which um, just to break up a bit, I did use these um, these twilight twigs and uh, stuff again, since I feel like it looks really cool. And also the the, the those grasses, these grasses are one of my favorites. And yeah, that's basically. Oh, I think I use some olive trees. I end up using some olive trees and these Australia. I forgot the name of those Australian plants as well. And uh, and then basically what the last thing I do, as I said, is the um, the bats. I do some detail with the bats and basically that's all. So I'll see you once um, I do the walkthrough and it's going to be a full fledged out walkthrough going into detail with every single exhibit animal just to, just to uh, yeah, make up for the fact that we've lost a lot of footage from the exterior. But yeah, I'll see you after the speed build. So yeah, enjoy the rest of the speed build. All right, so here we are in our quick walkthrough. So yet again, I apologize for the fact that, you know, basically the whole exterior, um, like the speed build was completely missing yeah I don't know what happened but something went wrong with the recording and uh, yeah all of that was gone but to make it a bit better I suppose I'll I'll show you a really cool uh, walkthrough of the inside of this mosque which is supposed to be a mosque that's like um, being renovated since it's an old mosque 
but I'm sure I've explained all of that during the speed build. But yeah, let's explore this mosque. So we'll go into um, the explore mode. And well, you have to enter through the butterfly and reptile house entrance since it is the reptile house. Um, I'm not sure if you remember this. This is where, this is where you can look at the blue wildebeest as well. Uh, so yeah, this is the butterfly house to the left. And now there's an extra sign saying reptile house to the right. So we will enter the reptile house. And actually, let's make it nighttime just for the full Reptile House experience. Here we are. This is the Reptile House, which is just an old mosque that has been renovated and turned into a functioning Reptile House with bats uh, and some other non reptilians like um, axolotls and stuff like that. But let's explore. So we have a couple of animals to look at. So actually, I'm not sure. I haven't put any signage down or anything. So. We'll have to discover which species that we can find in each exhibit. So the first exhibit has something, obviously, but what exactly is, well, it's quite difficult to find in these large exhibits, especially if it's a small animal. Oh wait, I think I've found the culprit. It's a diamondback rattlesnake. You can tell by the tail and the patterning on its back. So that's hiding right under that rock there. And actually, there is one more right on top of this branch, which is really cool. Look at that. At least it's nice to see that they use the branches. So, um, yeah, let's move over to this exhibit over here. And I think from what I remember, this exhibit will have some creepy crawlies. I'm correct. They have some desert, hairy, is it the hairy, hairy desert scorpions, giant desert hairy scorpions, something like that. But yeah, they have, um, there's a handful of those desert scorpions, two over there on the branches. Now we'll move over to this side and explore what um, we will find here. Oh, it's the infamous Gila monster. Well, I don't know why I said infamous, it's actually not infamous. I guess because of its deadly bite, perhaps? But yeah, it's um, it's very, it's one of my favourite reptiles. I love the Gila monster. Although you don't want to be bitten by one, although they don't really bite humans, so uh, nothing to be afraid of in general. But yeah, look how cool they look. So um, that's awesome. Gila monsters, very cool. All these desert crawl crawlies and uh, reptiles and stuff. Next is the only terrarium or like exhibit without a desert skirt, which is the axolotl, which. I thought would kind of fit in this desert environment. They're from Mexico, right? It's like not desert, but like in a grassland environment. So I thought I'll add the axolotl. I wanted to add the Mexican uh, red meat tarantula as well, but it just looked too tropical, the um, skirt. Yeah, uh, uh, well, the exhibit skirts. But axolotls are probably the most difficult to find. Oh no, there's one right, <laughs> right by the glass. Oh, that is cute. That's really funny. But there are more, but they're really small. So, um, yeah, good luck. Oh, wait. I think I see one right over there. There he's floating. Very cute. So, uh, yeah, let's have a further look. This is the first habitat animal, which um, is. Oh, they already have babies. How fast are they? These are the Komodo dragons, and these are two little baby Komodo dragons. How cute. Oh, you must love them. Komodo dragons are really impressive and scary looking, but at the same time, just super gorgeous. I mean, look at those pretty lizards. They are so cool. And they're the biggest lizards, well, biggest extant living, li like living uh, lizards from the island of Komodo, hence the name Komodo dragon. And I think dragon is quite a fitting name for these beasts, since uh, they do look quite dragonous, if that's even a word. Oh, it's looking at me. How pretty. And I think the habitat is quite nice as well. Nice open habitat, you know. Next, we will take a look at... These are some Australian critters, because these over there were North American critters. Let's have a look at what we'll find here. Ooh, that looks like a death adder. 
I think that's what it's called. Yeah, common death adder, is it? You can tell by the stripe pattern. That's quite a cool little snake. Oh, and there's one more there. I knew there was some more. But let's continue to the next Australian critter, which is my favorite. This is this is my favorite lizard. It's the blue tongue skink. Uh, I've always always wanted the blue tongue skink because they you can keep them as pets as well. Although no, it can be quite challenging at times. But yeah, blue tongue skink, very cool. Um, seems like you're alone, buddy. I don't know where your friends are. I'm pretty sure you have a partner somewhere. But yeah, the blue tongue skink. Awesome, awesome little um, lizard. Next, we will take a look at the last Australian reptile, which is the brown snake, the eastern brown snake. One of the deadliest. You definitely don't want to be bitten by an eastern brown snake. Did you know Australia... Actually, I don't know the exact fact. I think it was like the top 10 deadliest snakes in the world, and most of them live in Australia. Actually, I should have done more research on the exact number, but yeah, that's uh, something to... <laughs> definitely, definitely something, uh, I guess, that shouts, yep, that's Australia for you. But, uh, oh, there's two more down there. There's one down there and one right above him, or her, and then there's one on the tree. Very cool. Next, this is a smaller exhibit. but I actually made it just a background because I thought it was... I mean, most of them are too big, but I thought, especially for a small little bug like this, that um, this huge exhibit would be too big. Even this is quite big, really. But at least I've kept the dung, and as you can see, the dung beetles are all over the um, dung, and they're rolling. <laughs> oh, and failing to roll. Uh, so cool. They're rolling these um, well, the dung. And uh, yeah, actually, it's called the Sacred Scarab Beetle. Actually, the correct name, I think. And uh, they look really cool. Oh. That, that looked like lightning or something. I don't know what that glitching light was. Oh, yeah. There's a couple. Oh, no. Oh, yeah, there's one over there as well. I thought so. Under the brush and stuff like that. Brush? I mean, um, litter. Under the litter. And uh, obviously on top of the dung and stuff like that. Very cool. Um, next, we have our African animals which is our new dlc animal this is where basically this whole mosque revolves around since you know that's why we are building this mosque for the new dlc animals and this is the desert horned viper and i think the name basically explains what it is it's a viper with horns and it lives in a desert which is quite well eye-catching really the horns and I'm not sure what it does actually, but yeah, the horns are quite cool. Oh, look at look at that! One snake's popping its head out there, and the other one's popping its head out over there. And I think if we look over here, yeah, we can actually see the tail sticking out of that snake. That's really funny. And then that one, this is interesting. I've noticed they actually do dig themselves under the sand. Because uh, there, you can see that the snake is kind of a, uh, um, well, half under the sand, which is quite a cool thing that Frontier has added that kind of uh, feature. So uh, yeah, there's a couple of those spotted around, and uh, is there any in the back? No, none in the back. Oh, all right. Next, the uh, I don't remember. Oh, the puff adder. Yeah, obviously, this is the only other snake from Africa uh, in this uh, game. Obviously, puff adder. Very recognizable by its three colored stripes. Very cool pattern. I really like the puff adder. I think it's quite, um, I think it's quite underrated. I don't think a lot of people really use a puff adder since I don't know. I don't know why, but yeah, puff adder is really cool. An African snake. So uh, yeah, that's awesome. And there's a couple behind there as well. They're all in this corner, it seems. They really like that corner. Well, next, the last habitat animal another African animal, the Nile Monitor, which is, um, well, it definitely likes water, but yeah, it's definitely grassland as well, eh? definitely grassland. Uh, yeah, the Nile Monitor, it's basically just uh, 
Oh, a monitor lizard. We have three monitor lizards. I think so. I think a Komodo dragon counts as a monitor lizard, right? Yeah. We have three monitor lizards in the game. Two of them in, in this mosque. Uh, the other one being, well, a bit more tropical. The Asian uh, water monitor. Although they do live in shrubland kind of areas as well, I thought. And it wouldn't even have fitted anyway. Uh, this mosque is only big, for, big enough for two monitor lizards. But yeah, we have two of them, and they seem to be eating um, nothing, which is quite interesting choice of food. But yeah, the monitor lizard's also a bit underrated, I feel like, because it's a base game animal. But I really love monitor lizards, and if there's one thing Frontier gets right, it's it's um, uh, reptile textures, because the monitor lizards look absolutely pretty all the time. And oh, maybe this one will have a little swim. We'll see if he uh, or she decides to have a swim. Nope. No. Oh, yeah, maybe. And he's turning around. Oh, she. Can't assume genders, obviously. But yeah, they do definitely uh, enjoy swimming and stuff like that as well. Now, finally, the whole centerpiece of this mosque uh, is the, uh, well, bats. And I'm not sure if I uh, explained this in is this speed build, since I've recorded this before the speed build. But um, these bats are inspired by a zoo in Belgium, the Peridiza. It's, it's, I think, the biggest zoo in Belgium. Um, one of the biggest zoos in Europe. And one of the most highly themed zoos in Europe. Uh, and the zoo has this old... I think it's a church? But it's, a, it's basically where this whole idea came from. It's an old church, but if you enter the church, they've actually renovated this old church into a big, like, bat house, like a night house kind of thing. Which is basically what this is. And... It feels like you're in this abandoned church, which feels spooky in the first place, which is very fitting for bats. And you just have bats flying around, uh, and you can walk around. Obviously, you can't touch the bats, that's why there's a fence here. And, um, yeah, it's like it's really open, just like in the in the uh, zoo that I visited, Herodiza. Uh <clears throat> And, uh, yeah, that's where I basically got this inspiration from. So that's why there's also this open area, and obviously the bats... In theory, they could fly all over, but they'd end up always going back there since that's where all their food and, and enrichment items are um, and stuff like that. But yeah, it's really cool because you have bats everywhere and you can get really close. Like the fences right here, you can get really close to the bats. Um, it's technically a walkthrough. You could walk through there, but I've made it so you can't. So I feel like this is a better experience when you just walk around um, and you still get a good view. Uh, yeah, there's basically bats everywhere, just having a, uh, a little fly. Um, yeah, they're hanging on the mesh over there and over here as well. Flying around. It's a really cool view, I must admit. But that's basically all the animals. I know it's a bit of a longer walkthrough, but I think it's deserved since most of the exterior I couldn't see. So I thought I'll do a uh, really fledged out um, walkthrough from, from the interior of this uh, mosque. And I hope you enjoy the speed build. It's something different since it's all exhibit animals, or well, most exhibit animals. But yeah, we've built a whole reptile house in a mosque. Uh, I hope you enjoyed this speed build, and well, you can su suggest species for the next episode. Maybe the black rhinoceros, maybe the diamond gazelle. Whatever you would like to see next, you can recommend it. And well, I'll see you in the next episode. Bye bye.